Good morning, fellow punchers. The clock on the wall says 25 minutes to 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, on a beautiful Saturday morning. I'm in Killarney, in the kingdom of Kerry, in the Crystal Springs B&B, lovely location just outside of the town centre. Um, looking forward to the breakfast this morning, home cooking. Uh, we got here yesterday in about 3.30. We were up early for breakfast, but the woman went off shopping for a handbag. Imagine your first day in the country or second day and you need a shopping bag. But she got one and she reckoned it was well worth the trip to get that alone. So 160 quid, it was handmade and he put some sort of embroidery on her. And she was pleasantly surprised by the standard of leather and whatever and the smell of it and marvellous. So first time ever I got a handshake and a welcome from Larry yesterday morning when we met for breakfast, they were down ahead of me. We've connected really well. Um, it's uh, unusual though because, as I said just this morning, his um, his eyesight is is this bulb is gone and this bulb is uh, on the dims. His walk is very slow as well, so I have to walk with him most of the way. Tell him where the step is, up, down, and uh, stairs is, and there's lots of them. And there's, we were walking yesterday too. We went up the Tark waterfall. So he made it all the way, but um, it was like, it was like with a child really. Um, so that's why he probably uh, is fond of me so far because I'm giving good attention across on the road in Kinmare as well, similar. Um, we um, then had a couple hours off uh, and we went to, for dinner, we went to we had dinner in Buckley's just that evening. Um, there was no one doing roast beef, check the menus on a few of them first roast lamb, roast chicken, and um, so I, we went to Buckley's, um, counted the dessert. So we had a great meal there, and then we went to Celtic Steps out in Killarney race course, and it is in truly great racing preparation for the upcoming meeting, which I will miss. I've been there the last number of years on the Sunday, but I'll miss it this year. I'll be gone by a day, but we'll be back. We'll be back in August, and uh, sort of June is probably as well. Um, great show Celtic Steps packed out um, tremendous show I watched the whole lot of it actually I waited for them and I brought them home <coughs> and uh, for, I'm having breakfast now the minute to do this but they have decided not to have breakfast until 9.30 he said that he it takes him about an hour to shave and shower he only does it every third day um, so uh, we'll be on the road tomorrow morning at 9 uh, because we'll be heading to Tarbert for the ferry Heading for the, the Herden Chokers in the land of the tribe where I will shall have a few pints tomorrow night. I've none in a couple of weeks, bare one. I might have a few pints in Galway tomorrow night because there'll be no custard because I don't have any. If anyone is around, give me a shout. Um, we're staying in the Galway Bay Hotel, so I'll probably have to get a bus in and a taxi out. Um, we had. No look yesterday, it looked like we are going to win two races in running, but they didn't transpire that way. Um, one of them went one to six on. Uh, Alto Sax, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And Fast Tara, uh, Pigeon House, they were all well fancy throughout the day. Um, and though the legend uh, didn't settle, I thought he'd be a closer, he went off in front. Um, the one I was most disappointed probably when, with the way it faded was fast hair, but you wouldn't know what hurt it might have had bursting out through the stalls that time. Um, Pigeon House, the ground didn't dry out. I, I was hoping, that, it's amazing that it's nearly heavy ground in Gordon and, and all the good weather we've had. Anyway, I'll rattle on here, or rattle off, uh, get through to today. First page there we see is our good friend, and now... What do you call him? I've seen some, I'm not critical of it at all, everyone buys their opinion. Ian Whelan, I think it was, said about bus horses. It's a system I've used throughout my gambling career myself. So when I started off this, I wasn't going to change my ways or anything. And I I, I know what you say. And I, I, I always give everyone or every bus horse another chance. Then I weed them out after that. I'd handicap the race to see would they have a chance. 
which you suggested was the proper way, and I agree. But I can't desert, or we can't desert, Errol's today, and I see Merton Sheridan left a message saying he's travelling down. You never know. It's only an hour's drive away from me, so if um, I'll see what I can do. It's ten to six. I might. I might wield my influence. Um, Errol's great win the last day again. He's up seven pounds for that. Uh, the worrying part is if that was heavy, we'd be sweeter on his chances. 92. Uh, what was he last year? He won this race last year. Was it, um, let me double check. Why don't I just see it right here in front of me? Why am I double checking my phone? Not clued in this morning. Uh, won it last year of 85, yeah, seven pound higher. So it's going to be a big ask, but we're back him each way at the pay in five places. And the best of luck, Burton, to you. Uh, similarly with a horse in the 7.15, a horse that won its last twice races, twice for us, Trilby. Ground drying out again is slightly a worry. Uh, it's 75, it's up six pounds for his two wins. So we'll take that. But he has run well on good to soft before, which was behind Sir Maxi. That's when I first came across this little harshy last October. That was good to soft and it ran honest. And it's learning how to run better and it ran well enough the last day to warrant is um an each way bet today. Shane Gray is still in the bike. It's eleven to two with hills there, like and for a quarter of the odds. And it's paying four places. Gotta stay loyal. Uh now this is the way I weed them out, sort of. We won this race last year, the 130 in Chester, with Revich. But I'm not going for it today. I'm going to go to a smaller, smaller bet on a horse that has £6 weight difference from last year. Revich won last year this race. Uh, nine to, I think we put him up at 9 to 1 last year. There's a bit of money for him. And he hoed it up, actually, of 92. Uh, only £3 higher, but it's a nature all now. And... Uh, now, it could have been targeted for the race this year, but it had, it had zero zeros. Like, it's well bet. Um, 15 lengths and 23 lengths. It wouldn't sort of set your heart racing that is in flying fit for him. Take a moment of small each way bet on Percy's lad, who absolutely loves the Rudy E, like Franny Norton. Uh, one over the track and distance before in August of 22 of 94, uh, 95 today. Now it was third in this race last year to Revage, but it had no prep run. It had a prep run this year, and it's a bloody good one. Uh, behind Port Master, who went off favourite. But it's ahead of Mr. Grey and Northern Express and Biggles and Havana Blue. Decent enough run. Um drawn in three so it can get a handy position there but if it if it's if it doesn't break well and is is in on the rails you know it could be gooshed after the two furlong mark but it's um 30 to two seven to one shot there paying four places <coughs> um the huxley Oh, that was the horse that uh, last year. I remember this race last year we were on Mutaba, and this was the race that Point Lansdale won last year, wasn't it? It was. Um, he ran well yesterday. He stayed better than I thought he would. Um, passenger is in it. But, uh, Royal Rhyme is the horse that I want to be looking at today. I want to see how it runs. So I think that's going to be a nice horse this year to follow but leading on to the Chester Cup some of it a point I seen the other day that O'Sheen Murphy is jocked up was jocked up on two and he's on um, Aztec Empire but something I missed out saying the other night and had wrote down to say is that when Grand Providence won the Cesarevich in Newmarket who was in the bike Haley Turner. Haley rides it more often than not because Oshie Murphy's only first ride uh, on him. <coughs> so I don't mind that. She seems to get a good tune. 
but it needs good ground and that would be the case as well with um, the Aztec Empire that was down to running this last year and just pulled out because the ground was soft seems to have been targeted for the race Balding does that which is stairs but I'm happy to stick with the six places on offer now but I'm on the other day at quarter day hours first floor with Grand Providence in the 4.15 we have a last time out winner as well in uh, Alfonso Le Grand for Tony Merton it won for us in in Fundauk Buick is up we also have Baez in the race as well uh, had a trial run or a prep for this but this went up nine pound and like we were out we eventually got our money back and a bit of profit it was um it was a good price 11 to 2 wasn't it something the last time way back that were six to one um that was 11 to two but i don't know what the nine pound rise i think it's stable companion now we have to sort of throw a few pounds on each way because we won her the last day but Hamsian I was impressed with this the last day when it should have won I thought uh, and since the question he's got um, Oshin Murphy on it um, it's only recently after coming from France but all favour for this race the juvenile handicap hurdle side followed That's by Kurosh here. on the outer uh, Ham Sayan's going to try and deliver on the stand side in fifth place not <clears> been <throat> asked the massive question just yet second last flight of hurdles Palio came through there to dispute it with Royal Way, Spice Rum is now under pressure, so too Kurosh and what's Ham Sayan going to find still more needed in third place as they jump the last, Palio untidy jump but landed just in front Royal Way trying to fight back Ham Sayan's riding behind them, hasn't given up just yet either, these two leaders come close together, Royal Way and Palio, Ham Sayan ran out of room Spice Rum is running on again Royal Way is tough as you like here Royal Way goes on for now Hulan to beat Palio tight for third I thought uh, the horse wasn't to blame, I thought it was the jockey there's been an engine in that horse and the 2-2 two -two, I think will suit that 2-2 two -two and a half <coughs> suit that horse today um, I'd, I'd prefer to be on that one than Alfonso Legrand but Alfonso Legrand is the bus horse. Um, there's one horse at Don Patrick that I picked. Um, is that Eric Moore? Now it's gone favourite, but it's a newcomer to the Gordon Elliott yard who does well with his horses in Don Patrick. And it was with Stuart Edmonds in England. And if you look at it behind Tell him Listen there last uh, March, um, Imperial Bead. Decent horses behind American Sniper. It was rated 102 um, when it came, or when it went handicapped, and then with uh, Gordon Elliott, 91, up two pound for being third to Prince of Air, up three furlongs to staying on the last day. This might do the business. Juno is a danger, all right. Um, Mick Winter sending it up from the Langerland. And Darrell Keith. Uh, that's only its second. That's only its second chase. Yeah. And I had a good run behind Mick Charity first time out. <coughs> There's a very caught in the chest this morning. And I'm out of the bullets, the steroid bullets. That was a good run there. Between the two of them. Anyway, I get this into the oven. Best of luck to the lads today. They're starting at 10 o'clock this morning in County Roscommon. And they're heading around Ireland for the three days. I was looking, I got the right itinerary. It doesn't suit. Uh, they're gone the opposite end of the country to me altogether. They'll be in Mayo and Fermanagh and different places slight or leave them with that today and they're up north tomorrow down south when I'm gone west so best of luck to them thanks for anyone that helped out with the donations uh, bash the bookies over and out <laughs>